starting up a Chevy 350 build here in the garage, as you can see. Um, got my crankshaft there sitting on the floor. It's a great spot for it. But anyways, um, just I kind of go through this as I do it. But anyways, I got my main bearings put in there. I torqued down all my main caps here. Um, I torqued them down to six. Uh, well, in three segments, I did 25 foot pounds. 50 foot pounds and then 65 foot pounds and I know that the inner bolts are supposed to be to 70 but on the final assembly I will put them to 70 for now I don't want to stretch the bolts and I'm not worried that much about the five foot pounds how much of a difference that'll make but anyways um, where I'm at is I need to measure what my bearing diameter is I have my uh, crank rod rod journals main journals all measured up I need to measure out my um, main bearing diameters and then I need to assemble all of the rods with the uh, bearings in them and then measure those also and then just see if that all that compares and make sure all my bearing tolerances are going to be correct and then I can go ahead and put the crankshaft in but still need to do all the need to file or check the ring gaps and everything like that so still need to do that um that's probably gonna be my next step here just put the rings in and i need to check all the ring gaps with the feeler gauge yet so just you know stick the ring in the bore and pull out a feeler gauge and check those over just you know make sure that i have the proper gaps so so we don't have any problems just going through check everything you know basically when you put these together you got to do it assemble it take it apart and then put it together finally so after you check it but so I'm on the first step of the uh, assemble before I take it apart so I'll try to keep all this going and figure it you know record it as I go so doing a little bit of ring and gap measurement don't mind the dirt in there I need to clean this up yet before I do everything install it but um, you see, I got all the rings, these are the top rings put in, and I'm grabbing each piston by hole, and that's the only piston I'm putting in that hole. Basically, I'm just going to push this ring down, and just make sure that it's going to fit, be loose but tight. So, yeah, obviously I have piston 8 here, and I put it in this hole, so now you can see my ring gap there, I'm going to go through and and measure these and basically the this is a 60 overboard so the factory recommended spec is 16 thousandths basically I think technically it's like four thousandths per inch of bore and this is a 60 over so technically it should be like a 16 probably like a 0.1 or 0.2 but 16 to 20 is the spec some people will say on these hyper eutectic pistons that you need to add in an extra 20 to 40 percent. I think it says it here on this paper here. This hyper eutectic top ring gap procedure. Um, 24 increase in ring end gap of 20 to 40 percent in the top ring only. So that's for high end, uh, high performance, heavy duty towing, stuff like that. So really, if I go to 20 thousandths on everything and just do a just do that I think I'm going to be hitting both sides of that with the factory spec and increase the 20 percent over that 16 thousandths so I think it'll be pretty good if I go for that so got my feeler gauge here and gonna see where we're at but basically just uh it's a go no go right there and that's maybe a little bit tight right there so I think I have a little bit of filing to do but just going down the line, do all these, and then go to ring ring number two. All right, so if you want to see why you gap your rings, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but you see that gap compared to that gap. So this one, the feeler gauge slides right in, no problem. This one, I almost got to push it just to get it started there. So. That's why you gap your rings. There's a lot of inconsistencies even between one set, between cylinder to cylinder, so that's why you gotta check every ring in its bore. 
So I gapped all of my top rings, and you can see I put them in a plastic bag, wrote which cylinder number is on them, so that way I have them all organized. I even put them in the same hole as with the piston, but in this box here. But anyways, uh, just so I stay organized, keep the right piston with the right hole. So here I got ring two, and you can see these dots on either side of this here, and that's just how you, well, sorry, there's just one that was something else. But this dot always goes towards the top, so make sure you take note of where those dots are at, um, because, to see, see that little bevel on that bottom edge of this ring here, so that's just how it needs to be installed so that it gets the compression the right way. So I may not have mentioned this before, but this, second ring so on the second ring as with all the rings you want to measure it push down into the bore because that's really where it matters because typically on the top it might be a little bit more expanded can be more expanded this is a fresh um job from the machine shop so it should be the same all the way down but it's still good practice to measure it down in the bore um oh that's tight not gonna go. Um, anyways, so on the second ring, I'm going to 20 thousandths. Um, basically, the second rings, it's five thousandths per inch of bore, four inch bore. Yeah, technically, it could, I could go to 21 thousandths, but it's 20 thousandths should be fine for the second ring. It doesn't really expand near as much, but it doesn't see all that heat that that top ring sees. So, yeah, just going to 20 thousandths should be fine. Thank <laughs> you.